nothing beats dinner and a show. But what if your dinner was the show? Their answer? Teppanyaki style cooking, or as it's often colloquially known in America, hibachi. And few teppanyaki restaurants made as sizzling a splash as Benihana, the chain that introduced the cooking style to the U.S. With a backstory every bit as flashy as the most skilled hibachi chef. Today, we're firing up the history of Benihana. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. And let us know in the comments below what other culinary trailblazers you would like to hear about. Okay, time to try and catch the shrimp. And if you miss, don't ask the chef to throw you another one. It's embarrassing. While teppanyaki may have its origins in hibachi, each style of cooking is distinct from the other. Hibachi translates to fireball, and it refers to an object that dates back to Japan's Heian period, and not an especially potent shot of sake. Traditionally, these open-topped braziers, lined with fireproof materials and then filled with ash and charcoal, weren't used for cooking at all, but for heating one's house. It's unclear who first thought to roast marshmallows over this pre-electrical space heater, but the practice using hibachi heaters for cooking didn't catch on until the late 1800s. It didn't take long after for hibachis to move from the corner of the room to the center of the dining table, and families all across Japan would gather around the hibachi to cook up nice, wholesome meals together. Cooking in this way was slow and gentle, though, and it was a far cry from the flamboyant teppanyaki to come. Nobody was spinning eggs on a spatula or making that cool onion volcano just yet. The history of teppanyaki, along with its historical connection to hibachi, remains murky. The word teppanyaki itself can be broken down into two parts, tepan, meaning iron plate, and yaki, meaning broiled food. Some believe teppanyaki to be an outgrowth of the everyone sits around the grill style that hibachi had popularized. But while hibachi relied on slow, methodical cooking over open-air charcoals, teppanyaki's use of a hot iron plate made it the perfect candidate for restaurateurs who wanted to capitalize on this style of cooking, but who didn't want their customers sitting around for hours on end. You don't get a whole lot of tables that way. Enter a man named Shigeji Fujioka. The year was 1945, and American troops had come to occupy mainland Japan in the direct aftermath of World War II. But American troops disliked the local cuisine, and Japanese restaurateurs found it difficult to satisfy their foreign customers. They were also probably a little annoyed that the same military that had just dropped two atomic bombs on their country was now complaining about the food. Fujioka, the owner of a Kobe restaurant named Misono, was among these restaurateurs. One day, he had a stroke of genius. What if he replaced his restaurant's okonomiyaki, a traditional Japanese wheat flour pancake, with steak? Yeah, we'd make that trade any day of the week. It was a simple idea, but it was brilliant, and American soldiers soon flocked to his restaurant en masse. Wanting to hold on to his new clientele, Fujioka hired dancers and other Japanese performers to entertain his American guests. The Misono experience quickly became synonymous with extravagance, and for many returning American soldiers, it was the highlight of their time spent overseas. As rich Americans caught wind of the good times U.S. soldiers were having in Japan, Misono quickly became a must-see American tourist trap. With its huge success among visiting Americans, it was only a matter of time before someone took Misono's idea and brought it directly to Americans at home. And Hiroeki Aoki, better known as Rocky Aoki, was just the man for the job. I came here in 1959 with a Japanese wrestling team, and I went to school here in New York City. According to family legend, Yunosuke Aoki, Rocky's father, walked through the firebomb streets of Tokyo in March of 1945, just months before the end of World War II. As he looked over the debris of his ruined city, he came across a single red safflower, or as the plant is known in Japanese, Benihana. And it quickly became a symbol of hope for him and his family. He and his wife, Katsu, had opened a coffee shop in the 1930s, but it had been destroyed along with their home and everything else they had during the war. Their original coffee shop was called Ellington and had heavily featured American jazz influences. If they wanted to reopen and start the shop anew at the war's close, they knew they had to avoid any nods to American culture this time around for uh, obvious reasons. And so they came up with a new name inspired by the family's newfound symbol of hope. And the world's first Benihana opened, kind of. 
What started out as a coffee and tea shop soon grew into a bustling restaurant that would launch the entire Aoki family into Tokyo's upper class. Still, this Benihana was pretty unrecognizable from the Benihana teppanyaki that Americans have come to know and love. It would fall upon Yunosuke and Katsu's firstborn child, Hiroaki, our guy Rocky, to take the name of the family business and to put it towards his own startup. Born in 1938, Hiroaki grew up playing music. In his teenage years, though, he found himself more talented at wrestling than at the bass guitar, and he soon devoted all of his time to the sport. Although a bass guitar would have made a pretty good pro wrestling gimmick, you could knock the Undertaker right out of his boots with one of those. In 1960, he even qualified for the Japanese Olympic wrestling team, but he didn't take the opportunity. Instead, he accepted a scholarship to wrestle for Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts. After arriving in America, a member of the Amateur Athletic Union talked Hiroaki into changing his name to something easier for American crowds to pronounce. He forevermore became known as Rocky, and shortly thereafter he won three consecutive AAU titles, a series of victories that would get him inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame over 30 years later. In 1963, Rocky graduated with a degree in management, and he spent the following summer driving a Mr. Softy truck around Harlem. Well, he was technically managing that ice cream truck. He later claimed that all the other ice cream drivers were too afraid to drive through Harlem, so he managed to secure a virtual monopoly on the market there. And over the course of just a handful of months, he saved up $10,000 to put toward a restaurant of his very own. With some additional funds from his father, along with his father's advice that American tourists in Tokyo seemed to lose their entire minds over teppanyaki, Rocky opened a small, four-table teppanyaki restaurant of his own in Midtown Manhattan. He named it Benihana after his family's business back home. We cook everything right on the table, right in front of customers' eyes. I think today's restaurant, we have to have showmanship. Japanese food wasn't very popular in America in the 1960s. The U.S. was still recovering from tuna jello and mayonnaise casseroles and other rationing-related horrors. So the country was overcorrecting by eating enough red meat to go blind. Rocky knew this, and so he first advertised his Benihana restaurant with a tagline, No slithery fishy things. He even refused to sell any seafood other than shrimp. His first chefs were likewise instructed to throw in some bells and whistles as they cooked. Maybe make a joke or two and then light something on fire. You know, like a comedy magician. However, at this stage, they were still a far cry from the performance artists that they would eventually become. Though the restaurant's first six months weren't quite sizzling, a positive review by revered food critic Clementine Paddleford in the New York Herald turned everything around. It wasn't long before the likes of Paul McCartney, Muhammad Ali, and Sean Connery became frequent guests at Benihana, and Rocky was soon able to set up shops in other parts of New York as well. Within a decade, he'd also opened locations in Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Honolulu, making his company nearly $12 million in profits each year. Rocky was quickly well on his way to glory. He himself once stated that he hoped to become the Japanese Colonel Sanders. And while he'd technically have to shoot some people in order to fully claim that title, his success as a restaurateur was undeniable. With great money came great spending, though, and Rocky soon made Benihana just one piece of his ever bigger and ever weirder portfolio. In 1970, for instance, Rocky opened up his own six-story nightclub, which he called Genesis. No word on whether Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel ever went there, but that would have been a fun night. While some may deride Genesis Club as a mere self-indulgent playboy attempt to party, dance disco, and play some backgammon, Rocky still sunk $2 million into the project, hoping to attract Manhattan's wealthiest elites. But unfortunately for Rocky, his prospective rich clientele didn't show, and he had to shut the operation down just one year later. Even so, the failure of Genesis the Club didn't stop Rocky from launching Genesis, the softcore adult magazine, in 1973. Hey, the most successful portfolios do diversify. He also soon launched his very own Benihana Grand Prix, a speedboat racing competition, which Rocky himself won in 1979 while captaining a 38-foot catamaran with Benihana written across its side. And while some might think it a bit gauche to win the competition you invented, that boat was totally bitchin'. Shortly thereafter, in 1981, he set a world record for the world's longest hot air balloon ride. 
Rocky and three other brave crewmen piloted their hot air balloon for 84 hours, crossing the Pacific Ocean from Nagashima, Japan, to Mendocino National Forest in California. That is a very long time to be in a balloon. And it wasn't a leisurely flight either. The entire crew almost died in the flight's final moments, as they descended too fast and crashed into a tree while trying to land. Rocky was reportedly knocked unconscious during the crash, and the entire crew needed to be rescued the following day. Still, the record they set would stand for 34 years. And honestly, you should get special recognition for achieving a world record while unconscious. His exploits quickly resumed, and in 1983, Rocky dropped $3.5 million on a pair of submarines. And we don't mean he bought two luxury sandwiches. He then set off on treasure hunting expeditions off the coast of Japan that would be broadcast on Japanese and British airways alike, although he never really found anything of consequence. And in 1985, Rocky participated in One Lap Around America, a 31-state cross-country race, wherein he drove a 1959 Rolls-Royce that he'd had souped up with a TV, a microwave oven, and its very own bathroom facilities. The exhibit would be proud. Nice! Not everything Rocky touched turned to gold, though. Around this same time, Benihana created an entire lineup of Asian-inspired frozen foods, which they called Benihana National Classics. Now, I'll come to you. They were a huge success at first, but other major companies quickly took notice and launched their own competing Asian-inspired lineups. Once it lost its monopoly on the frozen Asian food market, Benihana could no longer compete, and they ended up selling the brand to their supplier. It was also around this time that Benihana tried to make their very own seafood spin-off restaurant outside of Miami, called Big Splash. But the attempt lost them millions, and they ended up closing it down within three years of opening. This was probably not the kind of splash Rocky had intended on making. And in 1999, at what may have been the lowest point in Benihana's history, he ran afoul of the law. Rocky received an insider tip that Spectrum was about to hire John Scully, the former CEO of Apple, who had helped turn the company into a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Using this tip, he bought Spectrum stock just before it exploded, netting him a cool half million. As some of you may have recognized, this is more or less the exact definition of insider trading, which is a crime. The ploy was discovered and Rocky was charged for it. While he didn't do any jail time, he did resign as chairman from Benihana, and he gave up his 51% stake in the company as well, granting all of his stock to a trust set up for him and run by his adult children. When Rocky married his third wife, Keiko Ono, in 2002, his kids became worried that she'd take a cut of their expected inheritance. Familial arguments ensued, and Rocky changed his will several times before ultimately cutting four of his kids out of it entirely, like an expert hibachi chef. Ouch. Rocky succumbed to cancer in 2008 and left Keiko in charge of his assets, just as his kids feared would happen. What proceeded was a series of lawsuits and legal battles between Keiko and Rocky's two non-estranged children. Too Fast, Too Furious, and Sin City actress Devin Aoki and renowned DJ and music producer Steve Aoki. Ultimately, in 2016, his kids would win out. But this wouldn't be the only legal battle the franchise would face in the 21st century. In 2010, Benihana was sued over the death of a man who broke his neck while attempting to dodge a flying shrimp, which is the most extreme way anyone has ever tried to get out of eating seafood. But the company ultimately won out, and the suit was rejected by the jury. All the drama aside, Benihana continues to prosper to this day. They now have over 70 restaurants in over a dozen different countries, bringing the teppanyaki experience to new customers every single day. The idea from uh, Japan is 300 years ago, but I just made the table much bigger and put the showmanship, put the chef in front of a customer. Their chefs undergo a five-week training program to teach them the ins and outs of showmanship. They can flip around their spatulas, juggle eggs, and launch tasty morsels into customers' mouths without having to ask anyone to hold their beer first. So what do you think? Have you ever eaten at a Benihana? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History Food videos.